61 feet. You know how I know? A little girl about this big was on a hike that we were doing with Kids Club and we were just asking the kids some questions and and I had a, one of my apprentices, an 18 year old apprentice of mine with me. Uh, he offered to come along and help out with Kids Club and he's just great at asking the kids questions. He's just, just going, hey, what's this? And getting the kids interested in stuff and he just, hey. There are 35 distinct vegetation zones here just on this on this mountain. By the way, we're talking, the, the area of this mountain is about 20 miles long and six, wi six miles wide, 120, roughly 120 square miles. It's not very big, yet we have 35 distinct vegetation zones within that area. The only place I know of that has that many vegetation, in my research, that has that much uh, uh, diversity in such a small area is Mount Kilimanjaro. And now Kilimanjaro goes from desert to Arctic Alpine, you know, on one mountain. But the footprint of Mount Kilimanjaro, I've read, would cover all of upstate New York. It would go from the Great Lakes all the way to the Atlantic, almost to New England, to the Atlantic Ocean. Thousands and thousands and thousands of square miles. Um, so here, this is just one of those vegetation zones. This is almost pure hemlock, a stand of pure hemlock. Hemlock is a Canadian species. Uh, it's, it's indigenous to Canada and it's being attacked by an aphid called the woolly adelgid and also a hem hemlock scale. So it's, it's getting assaulted from a couple of different directions. Plus climate change in itself, warming winters would be stressing the hemlock anyway. Uh, so what we have here is a collision of the Canadian hemlock coming down from the north and the woolly adelgid aphid coming up from the south. So this is a this is a battle of climate change happening right here. Now, when I look down in here, you can, can you see the puddles of sunlight down there in the mm -hmm. woods? If I remember correctly, I never remember seeing puddles of sunlight hitting the floor in pure hemlock forest like this. There's a place over here on the west called Giant's Workshop. I've been going there for a long time. And I was just there with my family in the autumn. And I needed to wear sunglasses in Giant's Workshop. Whereas years ago, we used to call it Ewokville or Rivendell or some mythical name, you know, from Lord of the Rings or Star Wars or something. Because it, on the hottest, brightest summer day, it was dark and green and cool and wet in there. Well, now it's kind of sort of green and lots of sun and pretty darn hot. So this is just emblematic of um, changes that are happening in this forest and ecosystem. Okay, so remember, 14,000 years ago, we'd be walking right now on top of a mile of ice. So change is fundamental in nature. The only things that resist change are hard heads like mine that think that we can do something or want to hold on to uh, uh, keep things the way they are. Well, that's not how nature works. Nature is forever changing. Um, so I'm trying to change too and adapt and adopt all that as well. In mountaineering journals, I think North American Mountaineering, I forget the name of the publication. I don't follow the mountaineering publications anymore like I used to. Uh, but that was written up as one of the 50 classic rock climbs in North America. If they had said one of the 50 classic rock climbs in New York, that would be saying a lot because New York has a lot of rock between the Gonks and uh, Hudson Highlands and Adirondacks and Niagara Escarpment. New York has a lot of rock. Um, if they were to say one of the 50 classic climbs in the United States, that would be saying a lot because now you're bringing in Yosemite and Canyon Lands and Joshua Tree and Rocky Mountain National Park and good grief. So much, so much rock. So it's referred to as one of the 50 classic climbs in North America, right here at Mohawk. Climbing was open to the public until uh, I don't, I don't even remember, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, something like that. It just got to be too crowded with climbers on the cliffs and Mohawk guests walking the trails. It wasn't going to work. Um, I could see the writing on the wall with that. Um, so a really great. Um, hike to do if, uh, after the after the ice melts is uh, go up the crevice. You could hike the uh, carriage road, skip the labyrinth, hike the carriage road, uh, go up the crevice, and then take sky top path back. Since the crevice, uh, since the labyrinth is closed, what you can do is go up sky top road and return 
the sky top path. The path goes right along the edge of the ravine and you can see the summer houses up there are actually following sky, the footpath all along the edge of the ravine. It's a really, really beautiful hike. And in my opinion, it's one of the most beautiful hikes anywhere. So uh, give that a try and we'll continue. Any questions?